Blog Show. Blog Show. Welcome to the Blog Show Dojo, your weekly lesson in sports blogging karate. I'm your sensei, Jamie Mach, and as always, our master is Dan Steinberg. Dan Steinberg of the DC Sports Blog at WashingtonPost.com. We're going to take you on a weekly tour. <laughs> that was gratuitous. Thank you. Our <laughs> weekly tour through the world of sports blogs. Every time we ring the bell, a blogger gets his wings, and probably some ESPN columnist makes another Karate Kid reference. All right. First up in baseball, we should start with Kurt Schilling's 38 Pitches blog because everybody's been talking about it all week, but we'll leave that to the big boys at PTI, the professionals, like your good friend Tony Kornheiser. Here on Blog Show, we show you mascot dance-offs, courtesy of LarryBrownSports.com. Wow, that was the best thing I've seen in Devil Rays franchise history. I mean, the Orioles bird got, got served completely. Although I will say that I think that Screech maybe deserved, Screech, the Nationals mascot, maybe deserved a spot. Oh, who doesn't know Screech, yeah. Because he does have that kind of pelvic thrust down where it's a little bit <laughs> disturbing sometimes. But speaking of the Orioles, Dirty. I guess, I, I wrote myself a blog item about one of their minor league franchises on the DC Sports Blog about the Bowie Bay Sox. And they had uh, one of the greatest promotions I've ever seen this week, Office Space Night, in honor of the... Uh, Famous movie from 1999 of Office Angst. And so in honor of this, you could go out in the parking lot, and for a dollar, you could take a wooden baseball bat and smash it into, for example, like a fax machine mm -hmm. or a computer or a desktop, something like that. We wanted to do that on set here. The evil sure. people behind Washington Post Live would not let us. Instead, they said that we could break some pencils. Unfortunately, <laughs> I seem to have broken most of mine. But you, you can't I'll break that in four. <laughs> oh, Whoa. That. I did it. All right. Science. Satisfying. Feats of strength. Very Pretty satisfying. impressive. Well, when, we're, when we told our good friend J.E. Skeets of the basketballjones.net that we were going to be talking about office space night at the Bowie Bay Sox game, he said he had a couple other minor league ballpark promotions, movie-themed ones, uh, the Big Lebowski night, where there would be bowling, half-priced white Russians. That's nice. And nihilists. Get in for free. Nihilists. Yes, and also, Lord of the Rings night. Fans get their money back if the game lasts longer than the trilogy. A lot of lady killers in the ballpark that night, Absolutely. I assure you. And then finally, Gili night, where no one shows up at all. Right. And speaking of things that make the fans happy, like, I guess Gili night would be the opposite of that. Anyhow, speaking of things that make the fans happy, we saw on the Home Run Derby <laughs> blog, Vernon Wells at a game at Jacobs Field was kind of heckled mercilessly by some Cleveland Indians fans. They're and he, good at that. he returned the favor by kind of writing some heckling, heckling of his own on a baseball and throwing it into the crowd. And I don't have the text here. Maybe you could read it off. Well, at homerderby.com, they have the pictures, and the uh, transcription is, Dear Mr. Dork, here is your ball, exclamation point. Can you please tell me what gas station you work at so when you are pumping my gas, I can yell at you, triple exclamation point. Now sit down, shut up, and enjoy the game. Your favorite center fielder. Vernon Wells. And here's an interesting bit of baseball trivia. I think the Toronto Sun, in recounting this kind of episode, actually spelled center fielder the uh, French Canadian way, centre fielder, you know. Is that wrong of them to do so? Well, Vernon Wells on the ball, you can see it very clearly. He wrote center fielder in the American spelling. Lost in translation. Kind of controversial. Well, Speaking of controversial, do you mind if I go with that transition? Please, you go. Speaking of controversial, Deuce of Davenport blog came up with extreme baseball. And we've, we've got some video of this. And extreme baseball kind of involves two baseball games going on at the same time. This was intended for left-handers, I guess, to have a, an equal chance at whatever whatever it is that they needed an equal chance at doing. But what happens is that you know, there's two pitchers and two umpires, and there's guys running this way around the base path and this way around the base path. You don't usually see baseball teams going backwards, except the Nationals, I guess. But it seems like a entertaining way to play the sport. That sounds utterly ridiculous, so yeah. let's move right along. Okay. And not talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs, but do talk about hockey just a little bit. OffWingOpinion.com posted some video of a 13-year-old whiz kid in a skills competition wowing the crowd. Take a look. Not, honestly, those are some great moves. I haven't seen a teenager put on those kinds of moves since Marcus Vick left uh, Blacksburg, I guess. But that was 13-year-old <laughs> year Kevin Roy or possibly Kevin Waugh from Canada. We saw that on offwingopinion.com. Sorry we touched hands just then. <laughs> and that kid had Magic. some moves, but the only goalie capable of stopping may be Michael Scott from The Office. That's right. Yeah, Steve Carell, not just an actor, but also a goalie. You can watch some footage of him here trying to, uh, he's practicing by himself on a rink. Uh, and since, you know, the puck is an inanimate object, he has to attach it to certain things Motivated. to test his goaltending skills and netminding skills, so he attaches it to a remote control truck, 
uh, the, uh, the backside of a cat, yeah. so that the puck can come near the net and he can show off his skills. And sometimes he managed to stop it. And yeah, we saw that one on the fan house. Yeah, well, fan house. And I guess before we leave the world of hockey, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Ted Leonsis over at Ted's Take for sending bloggers from On Frozen Blog over to the World Championships in. Can, uh, Russia, I believe. Yes. It's very nice of him, and I think it shows that the financial commitment of the Washington Capitals organization is there, at least for bloggers. To Russia with love, Ted Leonsis, friend of the bloggers. Let's move from hockey to the NBA playoffs. We've been talking about the Warriors every single week. Gilbert Arenas has jumped on the Warriors bandwagon. He said on his blog, Gilbert Arenas' NBA.com blog, that that's his pick to go all the way. We spent plenty of time with Baron Davis, Stephen Jackson. This week, it's Don Nelson, that old curmudgeon. The NBA is cramping his style. We saw him swilling Bud Light at the post-game press conference very in the first round of the uh, series. Looking like a steel worker who well, just got off his ship. Well, that was <laughs> Leather.com and Fanhouse noted he's no longer allowed to drink his delicious Bud Light. Yep. Too many calories, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I think that the, the natural inclination of the bloggers is to wonder, I mean, really, isn't there just as much, you know, alcohol in like a Robitussin or something that he might be drinking? But we get the point, you know, there's there's too much drinking and driving nowadays. Well, now the bloggers are rejoicing in Nelson's phenomenal swag. They've The fan house found a Nelly t-shirt on the Ebays. Very nice. And they also created their very own Nelly flask. Their version is with the Warriors logo and with the drunk coach engraving. Mine's just a Redskins flask, but at least to Coach Nelly, this one's for you, partner. You can take a sip, I guess. And I'll just say that that was found by MJD on, uh, on Fan House Blog. Sure we noted that you can get flasks for, I think, a whole bunch of teams on NBA.com. And you're not supposed to fill them with Dr. Pepper as I did. Because that tasty. Soft drink of champions. I'm a little parched, actually, myself. <laughs> well, speaking of drinking coaches, Big Daddy Drew from KissingSusieColber.net and a blog show correspondent, he sent his list of, uh, of beers for coaches. There was uh, Eddie Sutton. Any beer will do, no specific brand. Uh, Bill Belichick, only the Dark Lord Imperial Stout is, uh -huh. what, is what he'll put down the gullet. And then Larry Eustachy, uh, of course, unfinished keg beer is his uh, beer du jour. Yummy. <laughs> I mean, I guess this, this next video, there's a kind of a hint, a, a vague hint that maybe alcohol is also involved in Perhaps. this video. This is a video that we saw on Deadspin.com, and it's of some kind of notoriously hey, bad driving. golf cart driving. Oh my God, how do you feel about this? And contrary to popular belief, there was no drunk girls harmed in the making of that video. <laughs> and I guess my question was whether Ben Roethlisberger was possibly driving the golf cart. And I think that's still unclear. More on him in a moment. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. I want to talk about Deuce of Davenport yet again. Looking at Robert Royal's uh, MySpace page, you remember Robert Royal, the tight end for the Redskins, now he's with the Bills? Robert Royal with cheese, yeah. Robert Red Royal with cheese, if you will, yeah. It seems, it seems from his MySpace page that he likes to have a good time. The, the theme music that greets you is Party Like a Rockstar. That would entail a good time. His, his kind of little motto is My Swagger So Right with multiple exclamation marks. And, you know, he, he says, what more can I say? I'm that boy. He just likes to have a good time. There's nothing wrong He could be the that. less talented Gilbert Arenas of the uh, NFL. It was a nice MySpace page that he had. Well, also in the NFL blogosphere, we found this one on Mondesi's house. It's a poster of Ben Roethlisberger uh, hanging out with the ladies and then Brady Quinn hanging out with the boys, right. as Brady Quinn likes to do. Right. And and, uh, you know, kind of, I guess, a comparison and a contrasting between the two quarterbacks in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. And I think Mondesi's house is maybe making some kind of sexually suggestive remarks that maybe Brady Quinn was less of a man somehow than Ben Roethlisberger. I think the point is you're happy if you're a Ravens fan or if you're a Bengals fan because thus far at least your quarterback has not seen been seen in public drunkenly carousing with <laughs> members of either sex. Or maybe their Q rating isn't high enough for these pictures to, you know, circulate. Perhaps. But also in Monesty's house, they showed uh, Ben R Roethlisberger and his uh, Denali, his big truck, on eBay. You can buy Roethlisberger's SUV for 30 grand. Right. It's got 24-inch wheels. Right. It's got the DVDs in the back of the uh, seats. Yeah, you were a little skeptical, I guess, when we talked about this. But my yeah, yeah. It looks kind of like there was just a car in a parking lot and Ben Roethlisberger, like, posed next to it. And right. then they put the photo on eBay. But I think that what you're forgetting is the little description from, from eBay, which says, you are bidding on a piece of sports history. <laughs> and also, the other thing was that the, the miles, the 14,300 miles on the Denali were only put on during dry, sun, sun, sunny days, it said. Well, no, uh, no sports bad history, the, the one time Roethlisberger actually drove a uh, car with doors. Right. Uh, also, in sports blogging history, this week, the fine lady friends from ladies dot 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 wordpress.com are hosting the Hot Male Bloggers Tournament. Right. And you may be skeptical that they could fill an entire bracket with hot bloggers, but right. you take a look. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? 
Seriously. I was going to ask you, actually, present company excluded, who do you like in the hot bloggers competition? I got to go with Matt Ufford from With Leather because he is super macho sensual. Awesome. I was thinking at first kind of Dan Shanoff from danshanoff.com, but, th but then I was kind of leaning towards maybe Ted Leonsis because I think he's a good looking guy too. Oh, Mr. Moneybags. That's right. Ladies like that. Well, one thing that won't help you in this competition is eating copious amounts of cheese. Before we get to the cheese, can we can we notice one more one more piece of blogging sure, history? Sure, that transition week? was spot on. It was a nice transition, but Mr. Irrelevant.com, your blog is actually celebrating uh, a birthday. Am I right? Go on. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Three years old today. Congratulations, Jamie, for three years of blogging history. Yep, he was conceived after a special night between me and the internet <laughs> three years ago, <laughs> 2004 May 10th. That's yes. right. No, I think that's probably enough of that. And I'm going to move on to my cheese of the week, and this is in honor of the America's Cup of Polo, an international polo event being held in Leesburg yes, this sir. week, <laughs> and one of the one of the owners of Equinox the restaurant downtown actually told me that a nice cheese would be drunken goat cheese. It's a Spanish goat cheese that's soaked in red wine. Very nice for picnics, and this is a kind of picnic-y event. So if you're heading out to Leesburg this weekend, bring your drunken goat with you. Well, I'm looking forward to our weekly cheese tasting after the show. And we're close to that point because this is the end of Blog Show. Come back next week to see what t-shirts we're wearing. The swag is phenomenal, no doubt about it. But before you go, take a look at this YouTube clip of the week, courtesy of Fanhouse. It is an NBA fan rapping about the likes of Dirk Nowitzki, Kobe Bryant, and Steve Nash. Dirk Nowitzki dip. Dirk Nowitzki dip. Dirk Nowitzki dip. dip, dip, dip. Yes, blog show it is, and you can find more of this wonderful stuff. Compliments of Dan Steinberg's DC Sports Blog on WashingtonPost.com and Jamie Montrum's MrIrrelevant.com. That is his personal blog space. And, of course, the AOL Fan House, which is his professional blog space.